there are so many videos that say that you can study for the MCAT and score, you know, 100th percentile, 99th percentile in a month, two months. And every single time I see one of those, I have the question of, is that really possible? And are they on to some kind of, you know, secret? Or is that just, you know, one of those freaks and they are just naturally that much smarter than me and the rest of the population? I think the answer is probably yes. If you look at a standard bell curve, then you would have to reason that there are individuals that are just substantially smarter than you and me and they can take the MCAT without studying or they can take the MCAT with just minimal studying and they can retain everything they read and they remember a lot from undergraduate and they probably really do score in the hundredth percentile in a month so I think all those stories and all those videos are true and I think that all those people are not me and they're probably not you either and that is okay you don't have to be in the top one percentile of the already top five percentile that is taking the MCAT. So that begs the question of how can I study for the MCAT quickly? If you're watching this video, then you probably either are prepping to take the exam in a month or a couple of months, or maybe you just got back your score and the result was not what you wanted. And trust me, I've been there and it's not fun. So in this video, I wanted to take some time to tell you what are the things that you can do to shortcut your MCAT studying and make sure that you're getting the most from every single time you sit down for a study session. We'll talk about a little bit of cars prep in this video. We'll also talk about the two best ways that I know to kind of kickstart your MCAT studies and make sure that you see a solid improvement the next time you test. For those of you that don't know me, my name is John. I'm a third year medical student. I spent a few years as a professional MCAT tutor and now I run this company and this YouTube channel with my sister Maggie who scored in the 100th percentile on her exam and I scored in the 90th percentile on mine. It makes Thanksgiving a little bit awkward but I'm proud of her nonetheless. So in my years as a tutor I had plenty of students that would come to me and they would say you know I'm at a 480 right now and I like a 515 in a month. That's not really going to happen. I've had a lot of students that studied really hard and then they got their score back and it's you know like a 503 or maybe a 495 and they're just wanting to go up six or eight points so that they can get into like a local state school and that actually is possible i've actually had a lot of students do that so let me walk you through the steps for how these students are actually being successful the first thing that we're going to talk about is that you probably did not take and properly review enough practice questions we have a lot of videos on this channel about how to review a full-length exam but let me just vividly encourage you to make sure that you're taking a lot more practice questions and i'll tell you the best resources make sure that you take the double amc's exams and i would highly encourage taking the double amc's cars question pack as well now the double amc's exams there are six of them now if you include the free practice exam as well as the WMC sample test and all of that sample test is broken down on this YouTube page and the FLE 5 is partially broken down with hopefully some of them coming in the future and the other four exams are more paid exams now something that you will hear commonly is that the WMC's practice exams are a lot easier than the real MCAT and you'll also hear people say that these third-party resources like UWorld and Altius, Blueprint, Kaplan are a lot harder than the real MCAT. Well, the truth is probably somewhere in between. I think that a lot of the questions on the MCAT are just as easy as the WMC practice exams. It's just whenever you add on the associated stresses of, oh my gosh, I'm taking the most important test of my life. You know, what if I fail? This is embarrassing. You know, my parents have maybe financed me studying for this or my goodness, I'm going to have to take another year off if I don't pass this test. I think whenever you compound some of those anxieties onto taking the test, it really can make it a lot more difficult of an exam. And I think the easiest way to get past that anxiety is to make sure that you have a structure and a strategy to fall back on whenever you are taking that test. It's just like whenever you watch basketball players and they go to shoot a free throw, well, it's a pretty easy shot for them but they always rely on that one free throw routine to kind of trigger their body that this is muscle memory. They don't have to focus on, you know, winning the finals right now. They just have to shoot this one free throw. It's just muscle memory. And that's why we teach a lot of strategies on this channel, like the flow chart method, simplifying the question stem, etc. It's not only good habits, but it's also helpful reinforcements to utilize that muscle memory whenever you get on the test because that anxiety can be killer and it doesn't go away. Now, with that being said, I do think that there is some validity to the claim that some of the older WMC sample tests like WMC 1, 2, etc. and the sample WMC test, I think those are a little bit 
easier than the real MCAT. I don't have like a guesstimate at the point spread. You know, I wouldn't say if you make a 500 on the sample test, then you're gonna make a 495 on the real MCAT. I have no clue at that estimate, but just from personal experience, I do find that students score typically a little bit higher on like the WMC sample and the WMC one if they take it right next to their real MCAT. But WMC four and the free practice exam I know is representative of recent MCATs because WMC four had a lot of questions on it that were actually on my real MCAT a couple years back. And I've heard students tell me that the, the WMC free practice exam or WMC five as we call it on this channel also is an old test that's been ripped and created into a practice exam. So there's a little bit of truth. But there's also a little bit of myth to those rumors that the WMC exams are not representative. Regardless, they are the most representative you're going to get because the same people that are writing that test are the ones writing your real MCAT. So you've got to take those. The next practice resource that I really like is UWorld. I've used it consistently throughout my studies for medical school. It is my favorite question bank, and I think it's pretty much the gold standard as far as question banks go right now. A lot of people ask me how many UWorld questions should I be taking, and you know what percentage should I be aiming on, aiming for. And I actually have an answer to both of those based on you know my years using UWorld. The first one, you should take all of UWorld. I don't know that you should sprint to try to take it twice, but you should certainly take all of UWorld. And the second one is your percentage does not matter. UWorld is a learning tool. UWorld is not a measuring stick. So you will miss a lot of questions on UWorld and it's not a bad thing to miss a question on UWorld. It's actually kind of a good thing because it shows a content gap that you didn't have. What is a bad thing is if you rush through UWorld studies and you don't take the time to properly review and learn from those mistakes. I spend at least one to two hours every single day right now taking UWorld questions. And the biggest boost to my studies has been from intentional content review through UWorld. Now I'm studying for step two right now, um, which is a little bit different from MCAT, but I can assure you that the idea of learning from the question review within UWorld is the exact same. So questions that you get wrong, definitely take the time to understand everything about the science within that question as well as why you missed it. Questions that you got right, make sure that you are learning from every single inch of that explanation. You know, if you can't tell why the wrong answers are wrong and the right answer is right and all the science is around it, then you did not read that question well enough. You did not read the explanation well enough. So spend time on your reviews. It usually takes me like, I guess, 30 minutes to take 20 questions for step and it takes me about an hour to an hour and a half to properly review those because it's important to me that when I identify mistakes, and I have a lot of them, that I fix those. The second mistake I see a lot of students making is that they kind of ignore cars and they say that cars is something that you can't improve and it certainly is. When I look at cars versus sciences, sciences is kind of like lifting weights. You know, you can use proper techniques and there are some shortcuts to making sure that you know the sciences quickly and efficiently and enough for the exam and no more and I will talk about those later. But cars is kind of like cardio. Some people are naturally good at it. Some people have a higher VO2 max. But for most of us, you just have to work really, really hard. Now, just like there's proper running form, there's proper cars techniques as well. And there are dozens that you can find online. And most companies come with their own cars technique. And we at Informing Future Doctors have our own as well. You've probably seen the videos. If you haven't, then just type in uh, IFD, condensed to main idea on YouTube and you'll find it. But regardless, you should be paying attention to things like the main idea, the arguments within the passage, and whether or not the author is arguing for or against the topic. It doesn't have to be a strong argument, but you need to be able to realize whether or not they like something because you can get a lot of questions right by asking yourself, does the author like blue paint or do they dislike blue paint? Now to do that and to do it quickly, it takes a lot of reps. So for your cars, if you're trying to improve it quickly, take 10 passages a day, get better at reading, read books at night, stay off of your phone. Instead of using your phone to de-stress, read a book. Reading works just like a muscle. The more you do it, the better that you get at it. And if you're trying to truncate your studies, the quickest way is to just get a ton of reps in. And I promise you, it will increase quickly. It's not like riding a bike. If you don't do cars for a while, 
you will get worse at it. So make sure that you're doing consistent cars practice every single day. If it's your weakest link, knock out 10 passages every single day. I know that's time consuming. You've got to do it. These two themes are pretty consistent throughout all of these success stories of studying for the MCAT quickly, whether that be the ones you find on YouTube or Reddit or the ones that I have personally experienced myself and previous students. You've got to take a ton of practice questions you gotta spend a lot of time on cars if you're not naturally good at it. And then the third advice that is consistent throughout every single MCAT plan is to spend enough time on the sciences. Now, this is the part where I think we can change. The MCAT has sciences that are kind of colloquially named high yield sciences, and those are the sciences that are frequently tested on the exam. So things like your amino acids, things like enzyme kinetics, things like operant conditioning, um, the plasma membrane, things of that nature, those are very frequently tested. So it makes sense that we should know those topics very, very well. Most of you do though. The problem is not that you don't know the topics very well, it's that you don't conceptualize them well enough to apply them in the weird nuanced fashions that the MCAT likes to test them on. For example, you may think that you got asked a question about like magnetic force, but really they just wanted you to use Newton's second law, which is F equals MA, which you knew. Or you may think that they're testing you on some weird chemical you've never heard of, but really they're just testing you on hydrophobicity versus hydrophilicity. Now sometimes teasing that out comes within the passage, and that's why we teach the flowchart method. But usually when students are missing those types of questions, it demonstrates to me a lack of true conceptual understanding of that topic. Now, every single MCAT resource that you choose to use, whether that be you know, some of the big box names like Kaplan or Blueprint, or, or whether it's Khan Academy, or whether it's IFD's resources, all of them are gonna cover everything because those sciences don't really change. I mean, there hasn't been a change to the periodic table for a long freaking time, right? But what is different across the companies is how that information is presented to you. So if you have resources that you are comfortable with, go back through them, read through them. Make sure that you know those sciences and ask yourselves the questions of how could this be tested? How have I seen this science tested? And do I understand this globally? Because the MCAT's gonna ask you to apply it in you know, whether it be like a lab setting or whether it be in like some kind of like biochemical, biophysical pathway. That's how they're gonna test it because you're trying to be a doctor. You have to be able to reason through those things. But if you don't feel comfortable with your current resource or you feel like your resource encapsulates all the sciences, but they're really not phrasing it in a way that fits in your mind as the story that is telling you know, biology and chemistry and physics and how all those relate together and how all those mesh together to make a good MCAT question and a good understanding of how the world works. You need to check out the IFD High Yield eCourse. This is a course that myself and the other tutor on this channel, Maggie, made, and it covers all the MCAT's highest yield topics, which are ones that I've seen from taking the MCAT four times myself, because if you didn't know, I struggled with this test a lot before I finally figured it out. And it also includes sciences that Maggie saw on her exam and sciences that we've heard from our hundreds of students are repeatedly tested on the exam. Now, is everything that's possibly on your MCAT in our course? No, it is not. But is enough in our course to quickly, within a month, within a couple of weeks, learn all the sciences that will get you a 515? They're there. Our course takes a quality over a quantity approach and we talk to you like a human rather than like a PhD candidate. We teach you the story of these amazing sciences and how they all fit together and how they're tested, how we've seen them tested in that nerve wracking testing center, how they've actually popped up on our exams and our students' exams. We walk you through how that makes sense and we put it in a language that you and your friends can understand. So can you make a 525 in a month? I don't know, prove me wrong. I hope you can, but if you're trying to, make sure that you're focusing on taking an obnoxious amount of practice questions, doing a ton of cars passages, and lastly, please spend time in conceptualizing those high yield sciences. And if you're struggling to do the last one, check out the IFD high yield course. It comes with a lot more than just the high yield sciences. You've got guides on how to, and video breakdowns on how to use Anki and, and how to properly set up a study structure. But check out the link in the description and I will see you in the next one.